Welcome to the course, Basics Digital Storytelling. I would like to show you hatches. Uh, so let's draw some rectangles here. So I just always like using standards, so 100 by 100. So hope you notice I kind of just took a rectangle here, or you can just write a rectangle and you click somewhere, and then you can just type in 100 by 100. Um, so you have sort of some standardized size. And now I will copy this one a few times. So I can just say, for example, um, you know, edit copy, edit paste. And because I have my nudge set up, I can do this. I can just kind of move it with arrow keys. So here under options, uh, where is it? Um, modeling aids, nudge, you can set this up so that you have arrow keys. And then this is the distance that you move. So 10 millimeters every time I press uh, arrow key. And yeah, I'll go again, control C, control V, and just kind of move it to the side. This enables me then to have, you know, I don't have to really measure things. I can just sort of quickly move them around. Maybe four is enough. And I'll save this as a file. Um, so again, in this folder, oh no, actually not in this folder, but under advanced drawing. Um, and I already did some hatches today, and kind of as a test. But we'll do it a hatch, call it a hatch morphing. I'll call it here on class. Okay, so, so I'll show you hatches and I'll show you how you can kind of um, modify hatches further. Uh, so, first of all, we need to load our hatches. So, if you go here under options, um, there's an option here called hatch. And these are basically all the hatches that are available um, in, the, in this drawing or in this file. And uh, these are just some standard ones that exist, but uh, you know this might not be enough. So again, if you go online and you download uh, you download these hatches, that's basically um, a zip file, and then you unzip it, you get basically this. Uh, you get sort of a uh, just a folder that has tons of these so-called pat files. These are pattern files. I think actually, if I just take Notepad. Let me see if I just take a notepad and I take, for example, uh, uh, these would be, so these are all the ones and then I have some selections that I will use for today. For example, this bricks, just drag and drop it into notepad. You will see how the file looks like. It's just, uh, it's, it's literally just kind of patterns of code or so. Um, so you can basically modify these to create your own patterns. And again, these links here that I gave, actually explain how to how to do this so if you're a little bit creative you can modify these numbers and create your own uh, your own patches or your own hatches okay so that's these kind of bricks and they all look a little bit like like this just some kind of uh, uh, coordinates okay but we have to load them here so you can go here under import uh, and yeah then we just select any of these and again i just selected some for today to show you uh, bricks open and it appears, I hope you can see it here on my other screen. So it's just kind of, it's a bricks pattern, say, okay. Now it's here and let's load all the other ones. Somehow I cannot really load them all together. There must be a way to do this, but somehow I didn't figure out how. So I kind of do it one by one. So let's put this aggregate in. Uh, bricks I did, rubble. Um, terzo is, I guess, terrazzo, could be. And the last one is wood face. Okay, so I just added some extra patterns. Again, these you can download from online. Um, these are used like already for, you know, um, 30 years at least, or they exist on internet 30, at least 30 years. Mm. So they're kind of quite, quite old. If you look at some very old drawings, you will see the same patterns. Mm. This also, this path is rather old format as well. So you, the web page is very download and they might be, they might look kind of ancient. Um, okay, but um, they are here and then you just press okay. Now we can use this patch. So I can select here, um, I can select a rectangle and I can just say hatch. So I just call the command hatch. Again, it should be somewhere on the left as, right, as well, but basically hatch and then it's good if you zoom in a little bit on your hatch and then here you can set it, you can kind of select one, maybe we select our uh, bricks and then you can see that this, 
they are just very very small and somehow i think also the they start they start to some parts start to disappear i think if the hatch is sort of too small so you can change the scale here so you can go for example maybe if you go all the way to 10 now this is some scale that is fine and you just press okay now this hatch is placed now these are not individual lines this is uh, uh this is this is basically a hatch object so it's um it's a pattern and i'm not sure i think if i change this boundary yeah it doesn't change it okay but basically the boundary for the hatch is defined i think i can recalculate the boundary for the hatch this should also be possible but i'll show you how to how to sort of modify the, the hatch further using a cage edit or kind of a cage deformation uh, let's add the other hatches so in this one here it's like a hatch and we don't have bricks but maybe we add um, this wood face and now the scale of 10 works well so we just leave it go it again hatch mm, maybe this one here well rubble maybe rubble and then the last one um yeah aggregate actually let's not use this let's not use this one let's just use aggregate here i think that's going to be enough for us there are of course some other ones well actually let's do it let's do this one and uh, let's do one more um hatch uh let's use actually one of these pluses i think this might be kind of interesting and here we can kind of maybe increase a bit uh, um let's increase a bit and yeah, maybe something like this okay some kind of pluses okay uh, so these you can use directly now so you could just just print this out uh, so i'm going to create a layout print this out and uh, they'll just print nicely near pdf so you, you will just see them question okay can you change the this uh, mira is asking can you change the display settings for hatches some of them cause lag for me um yeah let's have a look at that maybe so um yeah i don't really know exactly what you mean when you say lag it could be that some of them are slower uh for sure um if they're like too dense or something but uh, they should i mean the whole purpose of these hatches is that they're actually rather fast to display when we explode this and get all the lines individually then that will become slow but um i don't know exactly how to kind of now let's say optimize this hatch for you but again maybe have a look in the break or or even better for these questions uh, monday is kind of better um because then we kind of i can look into the questions before monday and um so yeah, if you have questions you can post them in the chat and then i can kind of try to look into them now or before monday as well Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do further. Now, uh, these hatches are sort of, I recommended, I recommended that you kind of don't, uh, uh, in your drawings that you try to not really not use them, but sort of that you should be very careful with hatches because the hatches give it, uh, if you use hatches in your drawing, they can give kind of a very sort of a flat uniform look to your drawings, which again, maybe that's the style that you want but uh, i i would like it to go more for, toward uh, you know kind of a subtle changes and so on so so these hatches are maybe a little bit too technical for these assignments or for this assignment that we have but you can modify them or you can modify it further so i'll just select all of these copy paste and let's just go down so i just copy pasted all of them and now i will actually explode them or so i can just select this hatch and i can say explode and when I do this, now these are not, these are, this is not one hatch object. These are now all individual lines. And again, if I want to, for example, if I may be annoyed that these are, um, if I may be annoyed that these are sort of um, kind of individual lines, I can sort of join them together. Or so if I select like this and deselect this line and I can just say join, it will try to join all the lines where they're kind of, beginning of the line and the end of the line meet or points meet and if i say it here it's very easy because obviously this was a rectangle and now these are all sort of rectangles so that's kind of one way uh, one way of doing it but actually now for this assignment i'll i'll just go back so I'll just to undo so we'll leave them as individual lines see why uh, our results now will be a little bit better here 
just like that. But again, you can join them and they're then in individual. And uh, yeah, you can, in theory, you can just use this as your template. So you can just now kind of, you know, I could just come and start sort of deleting these or, and create, um, yeah, like a pattern in the wall or so I can kind of continue drawing from, from here. Um, very good base, let's explode this one. Okay, now these are kind of wooden patterns. Let's explode this one as well. Explode, okay. So again, these are just, um, these are just kind of some funny shapes or that are meant to be. I mean, when you do this on a floater, it will be like a small smudge. Maybe or on a paper, it will look like a small smudge. So uh, it's so, so sort of small. Okay, these are like this. Actually, yeah, these ones we can maybe try to join. Now let's actually join them, yeah, join. This takes maybe a bit longer, but it actually succeeded. So now these are all kind of individual stones. Okay, let's, let's actually, now let's leave it, okay. And here, this would cannot really join, but we can explode it. Okay, you have to experiment a little bit. This is better if you join the elements or if you explode them. Okay, and now we will do the modification. So um, there's something called cage edit. So we can sort of create a, basically a cage which will trap this geometry and we can start deforming it. And um, again, I'll show you, I'll actually copy paste this one and I'll show you some versions of that. So first we need to create a cage. So cage, that uh, command is called cage. Um, and then you have to define how the cage looks like. So this boundary that is sort of deforming, um, uh, it's just a rectangle in this case. And then um, there's no height. So it's actually a three dimensional kind of cage, but here we just work flat, so there's no height. And then these are the cage parameters. So how many division points do we have? And when we deform the geometry inside, is the deformation continuous or is it so degree three, it can be four, five, and so on, or degree two is um, a kind of a kinky line. So all the segments are actually going to be straight. So I'll show you the difference. But here we just leave degree three, enter, and now nothing really happens because we just created this cage object and now we can use something called cage edit. Okay, so we can edit the geometry based on the cage that we have. So I press enter. Now we have to first select captive objects. So the objects that we want to deform, that's basically our whole wall. Enter and then control object. And control object is going to be our cage. And that's it. This is just um, some other parameters here. And now when I press again, enter, uh, you can see that I got these uh, control points here. And these control points enable me to I can use them now to actually change, to kind of deform. I can use them now to deform my wall. All right. So I'll just do it a little bit um, kind of, and this is of course now kind of uh, about funny, but basically you can kind of pretend like this is um, one of this, I guess, cage point. You can sort of pretend, uh, um, I just have to be careful to select the correct one. Okay. So you just basically pretend like it's a piece of paper that you're deforming. Okay, so that's one. Of course, uh, uh, and then the kind of the cage also got deformed here. Okay, just delete it. Okay. Now this is my deformed uh, geometry. Now, of course, these are just lines, so there's no surface. So um, it's like a mesh. So the kind of drawing goes over each other. This is one option. Let's actually... Um, yeah, let's let's do multiple versions here. So maybe I can kind of copy paste this uh, multiple times, so I can use this as a reference. Oh, uh, let, I just want to copy paste a few of these, so I can then use them as a reference. Okay, and then I can use this as a vector of movement to move it even further down. Perfect, and let's do a few few versions. So. Uh, I'm just copying this geometry, so. Okay, so that's kind of one modification. Let's try something else. So again, uh, we have to actually draw the cage again. So we do cage, we do again the, the base here. 
and then enter and then again 444 degree so that's the, the number of division points and then this is the degree freeze fine enter and then cage edit select objects up and then um, control object is the cage object here and then that's it and now we can kind of continue but we can sort of uh, do something like this so there's there are these points that are sort of inside or I just want to show you what happens if you uh, what happens if you kind of start playing with them so you're taken kind of out of the object but somehow the So we kind of sort of squeeze, we kind of stretch the inside or so we, we we kind of took the inside of this pattern and we sort of stretched it. We, we just stretched it over the boundary. And here you see the drawing kind of goes all the way down. Now this looks three-dimensional, but this is completely flat. So if I double click here top and go here, ah, okay, there's some okay, something weird happened here. I think this is the object. Okay, so yeah, something happened weird in 3D, but basically um this uh, ah no actually yeah this one did actually somehow deform in 3D okay that's a bit funny but we don't really worry about this because we can always project this uh, geometry I think something is mm, yeah this cage is somehow turns out that it's not flat I think I should have done it differently but for our purposes this is fine so uh, this is uh, uh, this one is at least flat okay so we can do it like this. And uh, let's see what else we can do. So we can say again, cage, uh, bounding object. So draw the cage here, enter. And then let's change the degree. So change degree from three, I think two, it should be. And I think hopefully two is fine. Or maybe it needs to be one, I forgot. Let's actually put one. So that's the... Um, Degree of deformation, cage, edit, captive objects, up, cage. Okay, and now let's see what happens now. Okay, so now we kind of have, we can do the same as before, but now um, everything that deforms, like the deformation lines are, they're flat. They're, so the lines will always stay lines. Or, and because of that, we can kind of, um, I mean, deformation just look, works the same way. It's just, a, um, again, the geometry is not smooth anymore. It becomes, um, um, it's like faceted or, so I can use this to create sort of maybe funky looking shapes like this. Okay. So that's uh, when we set the degree to one and maybe one more. Um, and we kind of really do a, yeah, we cannot really do a combination of these two. Let me just see. There's a control here. I think I can remove it. Actually, let's leave. Let's leave the control here. And then here, again, just a cage. Oh, cage. From here to here. And then for four, four, yeah, let's leave it at degree one. And then cage edit. Captive objects, up. Uh, control object is this one. And um, yeah, and then, you know, you can kind of, if you're basically a little bit creative, you can uh, really sort of use this to, um, to sort of design or so you can kind of just make a whole drawing just based on this. Something like this. Of course, things are, things are squeezed here. So it might not be, might not be exactly what you want, but, uh, here we can maybe even extend it a little bit. And maybe even here, we can go a little bit down. Okay, so you can kind of really play how these def deformations happen. Uh, and yeah, and you can do this with, with like all of these or so. Um, maybe let's do just quickly this one here, copy paste. Let's um, just say move here. So I will not show now all the examples, but maybe just a few of these. Uh, let's do it again. Cage from here to here. And then maybe here, let's change it again to degree three, three, three. Point count, you can again also increase, but 
I'll just leave it how it is. Cage edit, select everything, select the cage. And um, uh, here it takes a bit longer because there are a lot more lines. So it's kind of, I wouldn't say breaking, but uh, okay, let's do something the opposite here. You can go out here. Okay, so you can kind of start, um, you can almost deform this if you're kind of careful, if you know how to do it, you can deform this into a circle or that's kind of the idea. It's kind of well, not really a circle, but it's uh, actually it's something like this. And of course, you can be a lot more precise in this. So I can move this as normal point. So I can just say, you know, move, uh, you know, move. And then I would say from here, and then I would say I want to move it for 100. Okay. And now it's kind of locked. Oh, no, wait. Move point to. Uh, somehow I didn't move here. Somehow. Ah, didn't really fix it. I don't know why. Okay, but you can kind of be more. Uh, you can be more precise when you're kind of doing this, uh, doing these movements, and basically do uh, do like projections. You see here we have diagonal lines, but then when you start sort of um, uh, deforming them, then they they kind of they can start to kind of be curvy, and then you can use this further as your pattern. Or so you can kind of start trimming this and use this as a pattern in your in your drawings. Or so it's actually a rather uh, powerful workflow. And then here. Um, yeah, let's just do one more here. Nothing special. So paste, move it here. Uh, yeah, just one, one more example. To the cage. This is fine. And then cage, edit, captive objects, cage. Okay. And now this point should appear. Ah, right there. Okay. Yeah, now we can just kind of again do something similar. And this is how you can change the sort of the density of your, or you can kind of start changing, uh, let's say, the density of these points or sort of the, the, the density of the pattern. And, you know, here you can kind of, um, or you can kind of, let me actually go back. You can start sort of applying some twisting something like this. So you can have kind of a vortex inside. And again, you have to be kind of, maybe there's another geometry that you use um, as a base to align these control points or so you don't do it approximately like me, but you have, um, you have another kind of just drawing of maybe a rectangle here, that then you use to again, align these, these, these points, okay? So now these are kind of, they start to wrap, wrap around. Okay, so this is how you can modify these patterns. Again, these are completely modifiable later, so you can just uh, you can just kind of select them, and um, I'm trying to deselect these. Okay, and then you can just kind of say delete, and you would delete them, or so you can kind of completely modify them also later. Okay, I'll save this example. I'll finish up some of these later. I'll give you this as a, a as kind of a tutorial example, and. Um, Mm, okay, and that's basically it for the hatches. Um, but I will show you now. Let me just think a little bit. Okay, uh, I want to show you a few other, a uh, few other things. So maybe we go back to that um, block drawing. Uh, so I'll just take a new file, new. Okay, I'll actually show you this example here. So. Um, just open it here. I have uh, these are examples from from last year, so um, um, the these are yeah these ones I can give you or I'm not sure if I gave you already. I think they should be somewhere. So that's basically what you can do um, uh, with this deformation. Just a minute. Okay, so your your facade can kind of you can just draw a facade or basically any drawing, and then you can use this cage edit. So you would, here you would have a lot more control points and then you just move them up and down um, and you basically deform your facade in that way kind of create sort of a curvy looking building and this is degree three and if you have degree one then this is how it looks like so it just it's just kind of faceted uh, same thing here of course it's clear that you can use this to project 
objects onto a facade. So you can have a ele hel elevation and you can sort of just glue it onto the facade by just taking the control points and putting them in the correct positions. Okay, uh, Hannah is asking, in what part of making the cage should the points appear in the drawing? If you could show that part again, it would be great. <laughs> making the cage points appear in, in the drawing. Yeah, so it's, um, okay, I'll just show you mm -hmm. one more time. I had a feeling like I showed you now a million times. So I'll show you now one more time. You have to do actually two steps. Or so one step is that you have, let's take this one. And uh, so first you have to draw the cage, cage object. So you write in cage. And then you actually draw this cage here. Hide enter. And then here you just define which points you, or how many points you want to have. But if you're fine with everything, just press enter. That's it. So now you have the cage object. It's here. And now the second step is to do cage edit. So here there are, you, you don't see the points anymore. You say cage edit. Then you have to select now everything. Press enter. Then select the cage that you just created. And then there's this uh, one other option here. Press enter. And then you wait a little bit, and then it will appear. Or so if you have a lot of lines, this last step might actually take a bit longer to kind of do. Okay, but this is basically how you do it. I hope, uh, I hope this now answers the question. Okay, um, just let's save this. Okay, so uh, I just showing you a little bit th these examples. So again, if you're a little bit creative, how you use these deformations, you can create all of these examples here. Or so you can just kind of start deforming. Um, you can have kind of a, a regular drawing and I mean, this looks like it's in perspective, basically. Or, but um, okay, that's this part, and then you can do the same thing. This is actually again also done with the, probably also the same hatch. So it gives it a very, I mean, it's kind of warped, but it gives it sort of a three-dimensional feel. But it's just, it's a completely flat drawing. Right? So some examples here, and um, and yeah, and then the um, again, you can do this for hatches, and then you can actually. Um, you can create these sort of modules that are deformed and you can start doing, you can start weaving them together or because now you, you don't have squares anymore to put together, but here you have sort of this, I mean, if you're careful with this, uh, how you extrude these points, you would extrude them for exactly the right amount. Or so I hope this might not be exactly clear, but if now I just showed you kind of how to do a little bit these, uh, uh, these shapes here, uh -huh, here you can also, you don't start with, um, with the kind of rectangle, but it needs to be a rectangle with sort of a rounded edges. So you create a hatch, you explode it, and you can see even here inside, I, I uh, rounded the edges of some of these bricks. So they're a little bit different. And then you start, you kind of use the cage edit to create a module maybe that looks like this. And because these offsets are always the same, so they are kind of, there are some number here. And uh, then that means that these also fit nice together. So just as as the squares uh, would fit nicely together. If you deform them in a controlled way, you can actually uh, fit these ones as well. And this now looks a little bit like some kind of a weaving pattern, let's say it's a kind of woven bricks. Okay, so, you know, you can kind of use these techniques if you're producing a design or maybe just a pattern, um, or they can be kind of a base, you know, for something that you kind of create, create later. Um, I just wanted to show you now quickly before we move on, because today I just decided to show you a lot. <laughs> I want to show you this, this example here. Or so let's say you have an irregular, I mean irregular, let's say you have a non-square building. So maybe it's some kind of a, you know, Helsinki, this would be Imperatalo in Hakaniemi or um, some kind of oval building in this case, and how you would kind of start to draw a pattern there because it's not, the, the facade is not flat anymore. It's kind of curved. But there is actually a very easy way sort of to start with that as well. So it's not a problem at all. I mean, this looks like complicated, but it's actually very, very easy. And I'll show you now how to how to do it. Maybe we want to do something, yeah, like a yeah, let's do like an oval building. Maybe it's maybe better than Impertalo. Okay. So we go again to top, new drawing, grid, move these. Okay, so let's draw an ellipse. So we'll, we'll try to just just do kind of this this drawing here. Um, let's do um, ellipse. So, 
here I can go, uh, here's ellipse here, uh, center, and then I say maybe 100. Now this is fixed. Uh, I go like vertical or horizontal here, press shift, and then I just click. And now I can just sort of select, um, or maybe I can say 50 or not. Now, okay, now this is, actually, I'm not sure. This is, I guess, now 200 by 100 or something like that. So it's a nice, uh, nice oval. And let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to kind of just rotate it a little bit. So again, maybe you rotate it for some good correct amount. So maybe select here center. So here I have to, uh, these are these kind of object snaps. So I say center, then I can go here in the center uh, from here and just write in 30 or minus 30. Okay, and now I will draw. I will draw a height. Uh, now you can actually draw a tangent to this one. Mm, you can draw kind of a tangent to this point, but let's not worry about tangents too much. So we will just do it a little bit kind of approximately here. So we extrude the height, and um, mm, okay. So and I'll just kind of do a little bit of. Okay, so I'll do something like this, and maybe I'll trim now this trim. Okay, so we kind of got sort of um, like some kind of height here, and uh, the same height has to exist on the other side, so it's maybe somewhere here. Okay, um, now actually, mm, uh, let's actually do it differently. Um, let's move this line. So basically, the rules that I would have on a regular or kind of a non-deformed facade or flat facade, it, they are the same as 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 on a facade like like this, let's say. Uh, so, for example, I can um, so I would just work with subdivisions, or so I can, for example, select this um, ellipse, and I can say I can say divide curve. So it's either divide or divide curve, and then. Uh, aha, so here I can kind of adjust the seam. So you, I'm starting to divide this curve, but I can choose where to start it because this is a closed curve. I can, I think here I can kind of choose where I want to start. And let's say I want to start here. Yeah, let's say I want to start here. This is fine. Press enter. Now I choose number of segments. So I guess we have to eye, eye, eyeball it a bit, but maybe 20 is fine. Uh, actually, Maybe we do it even more. So I can divide, uh, seam is okay, maybe 50. Okay, so this is fine. Now I have 50 divisions. And again, you can divide according to length or according to kind of absolute distance or you know, number of segments or something. So whatever works for you, you can uh, divide it like that. And then I can now start, um, I can basically copy now these, these heights that I have. I can copy them kind of around and they basically form a base for my facade, or I can use it as a I can use it as a base for my for drawing kind of everything there. And this one we don't see, and this one we kind of barely see. Okay, so here we have a okay, so here we can just I could in theory add a line here, but let's just kind of disregard it, okay? And we will not draw the lines that are kind of in the back. And uh, if I'm bothered by these lines, I can just say select uh, PT, so select points, and I can just say hide. Okay, uh, and then this was 50 divisions, and now we can take one of these lines uh, here, any, any, any line is fine. And we can divide that line as well. So um, actually that's, so for example, I would maybe now measure this distance here. Let's say this is around 10. So I can take this line here, I can say divide. And I can, for example, now say I want to divide this line according to length. So um, um, what is my section going to be? 10, why not? Enter. And now the distance between these lines is actually 10. So it could be that at the end, I'm uh, maybe the last one is not really Ten, but it's something else so, because it depends on how um, uh, what's the left over. Or, okay, but I have I have now division in this direction as well, and 
um, I can kind of split this curve here at the point here and um, well, actually here. Okay, now I have kind of two parts, this one and this one, and this is the only part that is visible. So this is the part that is going to be copied. Huh? So now I start copying it. And then in theory, this is the this is now this is now a correct projection or of a square grid onto this uh, onto this sort of uh, ellipse or uh, this kind of elliptic surface. Uh, these ones go a bit further. Okay, because something happened weird. Here, yeah, okay, I might have to trim. Some of these, I don't know actually, uh, I don't know what happened here. Okay, now it's, now it's fine. Uh, and I'll just, just save this. Um, this under advanced drawing, uh, 21, 10, 0, 8, and I'll just call it um, elliptic facade on class. Okay, I hope I wrote it correctly correctly elliptic okay um okay and then i'll kind of you know as you know if you, if you remember it's like pt uh, hide i always recommended that you kind of copy paste your thing so I'll copy paste it and then maybe go maybe go up so for some distance and then now we can sort of continue uh continue doing it here so i can also actually go here uh, actually, I can delete this one and copy this one here. From here to here. Okay, so now we have kind of a, uh, it's kind of closed. And, um, and yeah, and then if you remember, or if you've seen this drawing, basically uh, we can start drawing windows here. I will not do all of them, I'll just a few. So maybe, uh, you can kind of you know select all of these, save curve Boolean, and then you can just start clicking. You can say, well, my window looks something like this, or and then maybe like this. Again, this depends a bit on your design uh, or whatever you're seeing or you're drawing. Or so maybe let's just do a few of these. Again, this is in a in this kind of raster, so about. Okay. Uh, in this raster kind of a grid so it's sort of easy to just click and decide where the where the windows are okay and uh, and uh, yeah so I can even just say hide and now I can just select I can select all of these lines here and just kind of delete them because maybe I don't need them okay now I can say show so I'm kind of bringing the back the elements of these points here that I have. Okay, so this is kind of a, uh, you know, and then now I can, if I'm very kind of approximate about it, I can just, I can say, you know, kind of copy and uh, actually yeah, I can do something like this. Now, again, this is a little bit approximate because I would have to, because it's a curved facade, I would have to kind of adjust every window um, or at least copying kind of separately, but I basically drew sort of this thickness in a way. Uh, thickness of the window here. Again, um, here I cannot really copy them well uh, because each one is different. Each one is at, 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 at a little bit of a different, um, a little bit of dif different angle. Now I use trim. So I'll just select these ones that are kind of outside and I'll trim these extra lines here, here. I have to be careful how I click. Okay, if I do that now, they, it's kind of, it looks a little bit like I kind of did a, yeah, uh, like I did sort of a, like the, these windows have sort of a thickness. Um, yeah, and then maybe, well, the last one, you know, I can kind of, well, actually here I can say offsets uh distance maybe one uh, offset distance five from here to here okay um actually let me join this join offset 
distance free here, here, perfect. And then I can just kind of copy one of these kind of down like this. And then I can say trim. Okay, so now I kind of got set also some kind of weird roof, let's say. Okay, and then you can basically continue like this. So again, this is the grid. You use divisions here. So on a facade, uh, these divisions are kind of equally, or they, they have uh, equal spacing. So you can then use them as a, as a sort of a base to set up this kind of grid, which of course curves around, but this doesn't matter. And in the end, you can use this as a basis to draw on a curved facade or so these ones, these windows are kind of properly distorted in that way. So let's say we have that PDF that I just showed you and you opened Adobe Illustrator, which is, this is a drawing, uh, this is a, a software for vector drawing. So you can use some other ones like Coral Draw, and um, I don't even know what's kind of in these days, but there are some other ones that are maybe free, but uh, this is maybe one of the more professional ones that you can use. So let's say, the, uh, let's say this one here, you just drag and drop into Illustrator and uh, Illustrator works natively with PDF. So it, you can just save it in PDF and just, just modify your PDF directly. Also, it can be useful if you're modifying a PDF document that you have, um, you know, removing some watermarks or whatever, you can uh, you can use Illustrator for that. Okay, I'm using Alt key and kind of a mouse wheel to sort of zoom in and out. And here you can actually see how these lines look like when they are printed or, so, or they will look exactly like this when they are printed. Um, so the thicknesses are here kind of exact and these are actually now sort of individual lines somehow, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, but for example, you can uh, you can just, let's color one of these or so I can just kind of take it. First, I can change all the, uh, somehow it's, I have to go under ungroup, I think. Uh, so I have to double click or something. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of grouped, so you have to double click to kind of get, get into it. You can now sort of change basically everything. So I can just call, uh, change the colors of these lines. I have to load some swatches here. Uh, swatch library, which are just colors. Uh, so let's load these ones in. Add the swatches. Uh, and then here, um, yeah, you can kind of just select this line and turn it uh, red if you want. And uh, these ones, yeah, these ones here are kind of individual. Um, or let's give it some nice kind of blue color, okay? And uh, let's just kind of color this quickly. I think if I select these, these are not closed surfaces, so they might not color that well. Uh, there's an option here. I didn't test this before. Uh, live paint bucket. I think you have to click on the shape, and then now it turns into sort of, ah, no, I actually closed it here. I think there's some tolerance that you can set. Uh, now I can kind of color inside. So let's cho choose some color. Uh, maybe maybe you can do kind of some dark sides. Uh, and uh, this will live here, okay. So I can just take, um, again, live paint bucket here, and I can just kind of paint the sides here. Or, and maybe the other one will be, I uh, don't even have gray. I forgot to add it. Let's add the default swatches are to illustration. The, they're kind of at the bottom. Okay. Add the swatches. So now they're here. So we select some, select some light gray. Select again this kind of live paint bucket and then just do this or like this. And actually, um, <clears throat> this side should again, oh. Somehow this one is not closed yet. Okay, so this we would have to, when we export it from Rhino, we would need to make sure that kind of we have sort of closed surfaces that we can sort of paint. And this is actually not so nice. Um, I think we can do uh, expand, something like that. And then we can change this one here. Ah, okay. Okay, I messed it up a bit, but basically this is how you can, uh, let's actually try this one here as well. I paint back and click once, and now you can start uh, painting inside. Black one, up, and uh, what do we have? Some gray one here. Light paint back at here. Okay, and I would suggest if you want to add sort of color to your drawings, um, I would for sure recommend using Illustrator. I mean, uh, I, if you want to kind of really sort of go crazy with uh, you know shades and colors and maybe 
transparency and you want to maybe combine it with images. So you want to add like a raster image here, maybe you have some trees um, that you kind of drew in Photoshop or something and then you want to kind of put them into your drawing. So that's raster graphics. Uh, then Illustrator is much better for these hybrid workflows. So you have line drawings would be in a vector format and uh, maybe something else like background, maybe some whatever you want. If you want to kind of make your drawings a bit nicer, uh, then you can add a kind of a, just an image here layers you would add just an extra layer in the back and uh, this would be basically your image and in illustrator you can do this very well in rhino you can kind of also add image in your drawings but this i would not recommend because it's just not um rhino is not software so to create nice layouts uh, with sort of that combine raster and vector graphics so you can kind of try it but you might also fail uh, and kind of struggle a lot. Or, but Illustrator is a software that is just made 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 for that. So, kind of to do sort of finished finished illustrations. 